Today we're at the original City Hall of El Dorado. It was built in 1924 and hosted a main courtroom and a jail below. In 1992 it was purchased for one dollar and was turned into a museum. Let's take a look. So we are here today with Cynthia. She is going to tell us a little bit about uh, the history of El Dorado, how it was founded, some of the founding members, where they stayed at, things like that, and I'm going to let her take it away. Well, that's our purpose for having this museum, is so people can experience the history of El Dorado. And El Dorado started with the elders and the reeds, and they came in here and set up their homesteads, and of course the uh, Samuel Elders was up by the water tower because there's a DAR plaque up there and you can see it and then um, Mr. Reed set up his homestead more down by Beulah Heights that area and um, the trails came through here Goshen and uh, Kaskaskia came to the edge of El Dorado and then they split and one went out by um, Wolf Creek Cemetery and the other one went out uh, this road went out and they were very busy as far as trade and, and transportation and stuff. So as Mr. Reed and Mr. Elder lived, they decided to plot this, have the city plotted and they laid out two streets. One of them was what we call State Street now and the other one was Walnut Street. And Walnut was named because at the end of the street was a big walnut tree. <laughs> so they named the street Walnut. But they traveled in Conestoga wagons, they had large families that, you know, to this day are ancestors. In fact, the elders have a reunion every year oh, wow. in El Dorado, and they're having one again this year in September. Hmm. So if you're you know, descendant of the elders, you need to come to the reunion. Yeah, for sure. When the courthouse was built in 1924, this area was used for the court. And at one time, there was a judge's bench, and the fence, the defense, and the prosecution tables were right down here. Now, when I was younger, upstairs on the third floor was Teen Town. And on Friday or Saturday night, we came to Teen Town, and it was a really big thing if you were a teen. A lot of people that come and visit the museum remember coming up to Teen Town. Mm -hmm. Now, when the original building was built, um, the offices were parts of the city. There was the city treasurer and the, you know, all the different offices that they had for the city. But you'll notice that that part is raised up because downstairs was the police and the jail, and on this side of the building was the fire department. And that part is raised up because the fire engine went in under the building and they needed that extra space to be able to fit the fire engine in there. So those offices were raised up on the floor. The back door back there was the judge's office, and that's where he guess, hung his robe and did whatever judges do behind the scenes. <laughs> yep. If you uh, come and visit the museum, downstairs you can still see the bars on the windows from when the jail was here. Yeah. That's the only thing left of the jail that's... So now we'll make our way into what is the classroom slash school type stuff that they have inside the museum. So one thing that you'll notice is they have, looks like a couple of desks kind of set up what will be a classroom. And they do have a bunch of yearbooks, photos, a bunch of sport memorabilia, some things that you would see in El Dorado at the time. So we're gonna... One of the things that is especially interesting to the kids interested in sports is the football helmet up there and the shoulder pads 
and the little beanie top like you almost see in the cartoons, how kids see in the cartoons. And um, it's just amazing how over time everything has gotten so sophisticated. It's December 7th, 1923. A Chicago paper wrote that El Dorado had the strongest football team in Southern Illinois. Chicago High School challenged the team to a contest. The El Dorado merchants voted to pay the expenses of the Chicago team to come here and play. All stores in El Dorado were closed for the Friday afternoon football game between Marshall of Chicago and El Dorado. Mr. Taylor dismissed the Harrisburg High School and the interurban ran extra cars from Harrisburg. A crowd of some 4,000 was estimated. And El Dorado won the game 21-0. Fortunate to get donations of pictures and we have lots and lots of people that will come and ask for pictures to see who was in a particular class and that sort of thing so that is really really special uh, whenever they can find a picture that someone threw out. One of the challenges in a museum when you're dealing with an older building is to make sure that you prevent deterioration of photos and things like that because paper back then just wasn't the same as it. And we're always looking for anyone that wants to donate any type of history when it comes to school rooms or possibly papers someone has written for a project about the history of the schools in El Dorado. We will now make our way to the business room. There are a few establishments you will notice right off the bat, such as Lillian's Beauty Shop, Watson Lumber, and Carter's Chicory. As, um, this is from Lillian's Beauty Shop. You can see the sign right there. Yeah. yeah it's Lillian's Beauty Shop upstairs. And we actually have people that still come in and say that their mother went to her shop. a single young lady that wants to have their hair done using any of this equipment. <laughs> oh, I can imagine. That looks like, looks like torture chambering. I know, I know. have uh, also from Carter's uh, Chicory, uh, where they grew chickens. And And then recently we have added an area of El Dorado's Ladies of Distinction. Okay. Um, the first woman doctor in El Dorado was Dr. Skelton. And she was a bit of a girl getting shots at school. If it was Dr. Skelton giving a shot, 
She was a very serious doctor. Oh, wow. And uh, we were all very frightened of Dr. Skelton, but she was an excellent doctor and no need to be frightened, but she was just a very serious lady. Yeah. <laughs> and I would imagine she felt she needed to be. Ever was the one that started the uh, museum. Okay. And she's done a lot of a lot of history books. She went through all the the old newspapers and put in, you know, this year this is what happened. The things of note that happened in that year. Give me your help. Not to win votes alone, but to win in this new crusade and keep America secure and safe for its own people. Now, my friends, with the help of God and the wholehearted push which you can put behind this campaign, we can save this country from a continuation of the 80th Congress and from misrule from now on. President Truman stood on the front, in the front of uh, City Hall uh, when he came to visit El Dorado. And the year that he came to visit El Dorado, the date was 1948 campaign. That was the year I was born. <laughs> and this podium was the very podium that he stood at to speak to the people of El Dorado. The newspaper clippings that you'll see are headlines 15,000 Welcome Truman. You can see the ladies are in hats, the gentlemen are in their suits and ties, and everyone was very excited to have a president come to El Dorado. Well, there's a glimpse of the El Dorado Museum. There's still plenty more to see, so be sure to bring your family. They're open every Saturday from 1 to 4. I'll see you next time on the archives. Be sure to like and subscribe, and let me know what places you'd like to see next.